back to my kitchen and today's recipe calls for pasta flora with sour cherry. This is a very special recipe because it was given to me by two sweet girls from Sophia and Evie. So what do you say? Let's start painting. Okay, before I show you the ingredients, uh, you're going to have to preheat your oven like always at 350 Fahrenheit, 180 Celsius, nice hot oven. Okay, let me tell you a little bit about this recipe, okay? I've seen a lot of pasta floras made, and so have you. But this one really rocked my boat because the dough has two very special ingredients that you, will, that you won't find in any other recipe. So let's see the ingredients and we can get started. You're going to need a little bit of salt, some granulated sugar. You can use brown sugar, of course one egg, and this is the best for our dough. We're gonna need the zest of one lemon and two vanilla sticks. We have some marmalade cherry, sour cherry marmalade. Of course, you can use any marmalade you like, but the girls gave me this exact recipe and that's how I'm gonna make it. We're gonna need some butter. We're gonna need some flour, all-purpose flour, not cake flour here, okay? Those are the ingredients, guys. That's how easy. You probably saw that I have a little bit of aluminum uh, foil. I'm gonna show you as we go on, okay? Okay, let's start with our uh, wet ingredients. So we're gonna put in our egg, and then our sugar. And our salt, just a pinch of salt. And we're going to whisk it really well, combine it very well. Okay, that's how we want it until your egg becomes white with the sugar. And now to this. I'm adding in my butter. And now we're not gonna whisk anymore, okay? I'm gonna put that on the side. And with my cutting board, I'm gonna take one vanilla stick and the other one. You can use two, you can use one, but you have to, if you want that really deep flavor, you gotta use some fresh uh, vanilla sticks, okay? Slice our vanilla right in the middle so we can get all those little spores out, okay? That's what we want. That's where all the flavor is. Okay, just put that on the side. And we're going to move on to the next one. You can smell the essence of the vanilla as I'm cutting right through it. I'm just going to take all these little spores out, okay? Gently, so the floor doesn't eat them. Okay, we're going to get rid of this because we don't need it. And now, in the butter, we're going to add in our little spores, okay? See, that's what we want. And now I'm taking my lemon and I'm gonna zest it all the way through. Be very careful, we don't want the white, I just want the yellow peel. If you add the white and you overgrade, you're gonna get a very bitter batter. A bitter batter, isn't that wonderful? One lemon zest is okay. And a really nice, great idea, I think, if you make it with orange marmalade, use an orange for the, for the zest. This way you have a great combination with your batter and your filling. But since we're using cherry and it's sour, the lemon is absolutely wonderful. By um, using the lemon zest and the vanilla, what we're doing here is um, we're giving all the aroma to our dough. This way it'll be, you can 
you won't be able to taste that egg inside. I, I don't like tasting my egg in any batter. It's really gross. Okay, now what I'm going to do with my hands, I'm just going to break down my butter a little bit, not too much, and once I finish making my dough, you're going to let this dough rest for at least 20 to 30 minutes. This way, everything can combine well and you can get the best, the best results. Okay, now I'm going to take my flour. A little at a time because sometimes, depending on your flour, if you have a hard flour, if you have a soft flour, uh, you might need some more flour or some less flour. And all I'm doing is combining all of my ingredients. I mean, you made dough before, you understand what this is. This smells so wonderful. It smells like frosting, actually. You can eat it just like that. Well, you, you're not going to eat it, of course, because it's uh, the flour is raw. But the, the scent is absolutely amazing. Okay, see how sticky it is? This is calling for more flour. A little at a time and just work it out. Usually, it's going to take about three to three and a half cups of all-purpose flour. Make sure it's not cake flour. We don't want a self-rising flour, okay? And you're going to be baking this about 30 to 45 minutes, maybe 40 minutes according to your oven. Okay, I had to go outside and tell him to move a little bit on the other side. I hope he doesn't come back. I mean, it sounded like the cha Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> okay. Okay, now my dough is almost where I want it. It shouldn't be hard like a bread dough. And of course, it shouldn't look like a cake dough either. You see how it looks? It's very, very light. It's very fluffy. And of course, this has a lot of butter because that's what uh, pasta flora is. It's almost like a pie, but the pie is more flaky. This is more cookie-like. That's the difference between a pie crust and um, pasta flora. And of course, when we're making uh, pie crust, it has to be, the, the, um, the butter has to be very, very cold, and so does the water that we're going to put in. But I'm not going to talk about that now because you're going to get really mixed up. We're making pasta flora, okay? Okay, we're almost there. Now, I'm going to let this baby rest for about 30 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes, so everything can combine really well. And once we get there, I'll be back. Okay, our dough is nice and ready. It rested just like I wanted. And now, in my pan, in my pie pan, we're just gonna butter it, just a little bit of butter. This way we're sure that it's not gonna stick. Okay, just all around. Of course, you can make it in any kind of a pan you like, but because it has a pretty rim all around, I think it's going to look much prettier because pasta flora is a very pretty recipe. Okay, just like that. And I'm almost ready to show you one of my tricks when I make pies, okay, like this, like a pasta flora or a... Uh, regular pies. Don't worry about the extra butter. It's absolutely fine. This way, 100%, it won't stick to your pan. Okay. Now, you see my dough here? I'm going to use only two-thirds of it. 
because we're going to want to make the the top of the of the pie of the pasta flora we're going to make little um strings now all i have to do is just put it in the middle you don't need a rolling pin or anything it's a flexible dough you can do anything you want to it the first thing you're going to do is you're just going to spread it through nice and evenly Okay, come up close, cameraman, so you can see what I'm doing. If you don't have a pie dish like this, a pie pan like mine, that has a rim, like a ruffle all around, it's absolutely fine. What you're going to do is you're going to place it again in the middle, and you're just going to do little pinches like this of your dough all around the rim. This way you can get your design. It's the same thing. Invest in a pie dish like this because uh, you can make so many recipes with it. Okay, now here, I'm just gonna press it like that with my fingers. This way I can have a nice base to it, okay? And I'm almost ready to show you because we're gonna blind bake this. If you have no idea what blind baking is, I'll tell you in just a few minutes. Okay, you got the hang of it. Okay, now I'm taking a fork because all pie crusts have this way, an evil way of puffing up when we bake them. And what I do is I bake my pie crust or my pasta flora just for about 15 minutes before I put in my filling. Okay, this way I know that it's baked perfectly on the bottom. Now, this is what blind baking is. After you've made your little holes with your fork, you're gonna place a little bit of aluminum foil at the bottom. Just like that. And you can use beans, you can use rice. Right now I'm, I have rice, I'm gonna use rice. And keep this for your blind baking. And all I'm doing, see what this is good. What's happening here is I'm pressuring my dough. This way, it's not going to rise up unevenly with a big puff here or a big puff there. Okay, that's what we want. Okay, and that's it. That's the blind baking. Okay, I'm going to put this baby in for about 20 minutes. And when it, once it's ready, I'm going to show you what it looks like. Okay, my uh, pasta flora was been, has been baking for about uh, 15 minutes, blind baking, and I'm just going to remove my aluminum foil. Be very careful because it is hot, and you, you don't have to throw this rice away. You just put it in a nice Tupperware and store it for next time. Okay, that's what we want. Now... Into this, I'm adding in my marmalade. Evenly throughout my pie. You see what a magical trick blind baking is? My pasta flora didn't puff up anywhere. It was nice and even throughout the whole pan. And I'm just spraying evenly my marmalade. Don't put too much marmalade into your pasta floras, okay? It should be even cookie, even um, marmalade. Okay, we're gonna put this on the side because now we're gonna make our little strands, okay? Make it into a ball. And we're making strings like that. They shouldn't be too thick. They shouldn't be too thin. And now our pie needs about 20 minutes for it to be finished. And I'm taking one. 
oops, and just placing it on top like that. And another one here, let's see, right there. And continue into a little ball and spread it out. This way you have 20 minutes of baking before with your blind baking and another 15 to 20 minutes, again, you're gonna bake for your strings to be in perfection. And of course, your pie to have, uh, your um, pasta flora to have a nice cookie uh, texture. And we'll probably go with this one here. And continue. This is a very beautiful recipe. Great for a tea par party, great for your coffee, great for a present. And this is our last string. string. Okay, I think we need another piece there. And you see this dough is so forgivable Right there. And this is a serving for about six people, I should say. And you know what you can do? You can add a little bit of um, ice cream, vanilla ice cream on top when it's cooled, of course. Don't worry about the rims. I'm going to show you what we're going to do with that later on. Okay, and our last string. Okay, this is very forgivable, like I told you. And you're just going to tuck this, connect it to the rest of your pie, the one that um, is hanging out. That's it. Okay. Now, this is gonna bake for another 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes, and we are ready to serve. Okay, guys, there it is. There's your pasta flora. A very special pasta flora, cherry pasta flora from Evie and Sophie. Thank you girls so much for this wonderful recipe that you gave me and I shared it with all my friends on YouTube. I hope you enjoyed today's recipe. I'm looking forward to next time and always remember, cooking brings people together. Bye.